this is an absolutely huge fare increase for passengers. Um, what we've seen in general is that since privatisation, rail fares have increased by around 24% already in real terms. We have some of the highest walk-on fares in Europe. Many people are paying up to five times as much as they are in Europe for commuter journeys. And in the last 10 years as well, fares have already increased um, twice as fast as wages. So what that means is taking the train is becoming increasingly unaffordable for people. It was already unaffordable for people, and I'm sure lots of your listeners will be aware of that. They know how outrageous the rail fares are. And what we're seeing today is that the government is increasing the rail fares yet again, um, and that's going to hit passengers really, really hard. And that's at a time when they should be encouraging people back onto the railway. They should be encouraging people to take public transport again um, after the pandemic, uh, encouraging people to, to leave cars and planes behind, to, to help with the climate crisis, to, to get the economy going. And instead, they're pricing people off. They're making it really unaffordable for people in the middle of a cost of living crisis where we already are going to be hit with high energy bills and so many other costs. So the last thing we need is this rail fare increase. I think it all adds up. And what we really need is a railway that works for passengers, not for shareholders. Right now on our privatized railway, we have a situation where private companies are making a profit. Um, we have rolling stock companies who uh, lend out the trains, for example. They've made one billion pounds in profit during the pandemic. And who's paying for that? Passengers are paying for that. Um, so we need to actually run the railway in public ownership so that it can work for passengers rather than shareholders. Um, we actually have a situation on the railway where many of our rail franchises are run by state-owned companies, ironically, from other countries um, who are profiting from our passengers and using that money to improve their rail service back home. So, um, you know, for example, Arriva um, is owned by the German state. Um, Abellio is owned by the Dutch. Um, that's fine and reasonable for them to do that. But actually, if we ran our own railway for the benefit of the UK, we could, instead of giving out dividends to shareholders, we could reinvest that money back into the system. It's a billion pounds that we would save by bringing the railway back into public ownership. Um, and that's money that we could invest in cutting fares by 18% or in building new railway track that would pay for 100 miles of new ra railway track. And we'd save that money every single year, a billion pounds. I think it's a really good question about why we've gone this route. This country is very ideologically committed to privatisation. So even Margaret Thatcher in the 80s, she was selling off um, many public assets and public services, but she wasn't sure about selling off the railway. She thought maybe that was a privatisation too far, but it went ahead. In 1994, we privatised the railway, John Major privatised the railway, and um, I think there's been a commitment from politicians to involve the private sector in the railway, even when ordinary people can tell that it doesn't make any sense. And the reason why it doesn't make any sense is because rail is a natural monopoly. So what that means is there's really not any meaningful competition. As a passenger, when you're taking the train, um, that's really competing with the car or other modes of transport. There's not competition on the railway. You can't choose when you're standing on the train platform which company to use. And so uh, there's not really a market. And, and what they've done with privatization is they've invented this crazy system that not only uh, hands dividends over to shareholders who are um, motivated by making money rather than providing a good service. It's also a really uh, chaotic, messy, fragmented system because they've tried to create a market where a market doesn't belong. And so I think it's not just the fact that we've, um, that we've, we've privatised the railway uh, and had that ideological commitment in this country to privatisation. It's also the way we've done it. Um, and if you had public ownership of the railway, we could solve both of those problems. So we could create a sensible, coherent structure for the railway where there's actually someone in charge and passengers know who that is. Um, and we could have a national plan for the railway to get people taking the train again, but also have the ability for local uh, needs to be met as well in that system and for regional transport planning to happen. So the railway could be linked in with buses and trams in an integrated public transport system that's properly planned 
properly funded, of course, that's crucial, um, but run for the benefit of passengers rather than shareholders. With this government, they're not interested in doing that. They, they, they are, um, they're talking about Great British Railways, but that's really just privatization rebranded. Um, but they should look at it because 64% of the public think the railway belongs in public ownership. And that includes a majority of conservative voters. So actually people really want our railway to be run for passengers. They understand that this is a natural monopoly, that, that privatization makes no sense. And it seems to be the politicians that are very slow to catch up. Um, and now they're punishing passengers with these fare rises um, that are really going to put people off, I think. And uh, it, it's really something that they should look at. In, in Northern Ireland, they've actually frozen public transport fares. So it doesn't have to be this way. And of course, in other countries in Europe, they have far more affordable fares in the first place. And we should be following their example.